In this video, we're going to define the transfer function for a low-pass filter. The transfer function is a function defined in the Laplace domain that mathematically describes the relationship between the output variable and an input function. So for this circuit here, <clears throat> we have a voltage source represented by the Laplace transform of that input signal. We define an output voltage as the voltage across this resistor, once again defined as the Laplace transform of that output. And we have here the inductor represented with its Laplace impedance. So to describe the transfer function, let's start by writing an expression for the output voltage in terms of the transfer function of the input voltage, or not, not the transfer function, the uh, Laplace transform of the input voltage and the circuit parameters L, S, and R. Because these are in series, we can determine the voltage across this by simply writing a, using a voltage divider. And we have then that V out of S is equal to V in of S times R over R plus L times S. Now the transfer function H of S is defined as the ratio of the output, the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output divided by the Laplace transform of the input. So in this equation here, we simply divide both sides by the Laplace transform of the input. And we're left with the transfer function here then is equal to R over R plus LS. Now we'll see later on that there's a more useful form of this. The more useful form, the standard form of the transfer function, has the highest power of S in the denominator with a coefficient of 1, or rewriting this so that the highest power of S in the denominator has a coefficient of 1. We can accomplish that by multiplying numerator and denominator by 1 over S. So if we multiply the denominator by 1, I'm sorry, by 1 over L, if we multiply the entire denominator by 1 over L, 1 over L times LS, the L's cancel and we're left with S with a 1 in front of it, coefficient of 1, and then we'll have R over L. So the transfer function then becomes, and again we're going to do the same thing up in the numerator, so we have in the numerator R over L divided by S plus R over L. The Laplace variable s is a complex number. It's equal to some real part sigma plus j omega, where j is the square root of negative 1 and omega is the frequency. In general, the Laplace transform mathematically represents the entire response of the circuit. Or to say it a different way, using Laplace techniques, we're able to get the entire response of a circuit, which includes both the transient and the steady state response. Now, when we're talking about sinusoidal inputs operating in a um, in the steady state, we can replace S with simply J omega. In other words, if all we're interested in is the sinusoidal steady state operation of this circuit, then we can let S equal J omega. And in our transfer function, we can replace the variable s with j omega. And we then have, instead of, let's see, let's write it like this, h of s evaluated at s equals j omega is equal to then h of j omega, which will equal r over l divided by j omega plus r over l. This function, h of j omega, is referred to as the frequency response. The frequency response of the circuit. It's a function of frequency. So frequency here then is a continuous variable going from zero radians per second on up forever, t tends toward infinity. And we can see that this function then is a function of frequency. This function then describes how the circuit responds as a function of frequency. 
It's a complex function. It involves real and imaginary parts, and as such can then be written in either rectangular form or in polar form. We're going to find here that the polar representation of the frequency response function is a particularly useful form. So we're going to rewrite this in terms of its magnitude. The magnitude of the frequency response is magnitude of h of j omega is equal to the magnitude of the numerator, which is simply r over l, divided by the magnitude of the denominator, which is the square root of the real part squared, r over l quantity squared, plus the imaginary part squared, omega squared. Remind you that we don't square the j when calculating the magnitude. In fact, just over here on the side, let's remind ourselves, if we have some complex number, a plus j b, the magnitude or the length of that is defined as coming along the real part a, a distance a, and along the, real, the imaginary part a distance b, the magnitude is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Again, when calculating the magnitude, we're not squaring the j. It just comes from Pythagorean's theorem. So coming back over here, we didn't square the j, just the omega, and this then becomes the magnitude of the transfer function, or part of the polar representation of the frequency response function. The phase of the frequency response, we'll call it theta of j omega, can be found by taking the phase of the numerator. Well, the numerator is a pure real number in this case. So the phase of a pure real number is 0 minus the phase of the denominator. Well, the phase of the denominator is the arctangent of the imaginary part, which is omega, divided by the real part, r over l. So the frequency response, then, can be completely specified in terms of two functions of omega, the magnitude and the phase theta of j omega. The graph of the frequency response of a low-pass filter is shown here. The magnitude is graphed in this upper um, picture, and the phase term is here. Both are functions of frequency and radians per second. So the magnitude of the transfer function, uh, the magnitude of the frequency response function has a maximum value for the low pass filter, I should say, has a maximum value at omega equals zero, and the maximum value is one. It then continues on down as omega increases and approaches zero as, omo as omega approaches infinity. The phase term starts at a phase angle of zero for omega equaling zero, and then as omega approaches infinity, the phase term approaches 90 degrees. So there's a, a difference in phase shift or phase terms added to the signals of ranging between zero degrees at DC and 90 degrees at um, for very large frequencies.